All right, so this is a top secret members only video training that we're going to be doing. And I've got my good friend, Lynn Whitbeck. Lynn, say hi. Hello, everyone. Yes. So Lynn is uh, not only a friend, um, she is also an Up My Influence uh, client or partner. And we are also, Up My Influence is also a client of Lynn's. And so Lynn, you are the founder of Future Forward Sales. Um, and so I've got your website linked below as well. Um, and so from a high level, um, if you wouldn't mind sharing what you do, because it's, uh, it, it has been just such a mutually beneficial relationship. And I'm so grateful to kind of bring your expertise on this training video, because um, we're going to be talking about a, uh, a very popular subject that just happens, particularly for those of us who are uh, communicating with very, very busy folks. Uh, and that, again, is going to be all about, uh, you know, follow up and ghosting and how not to get ghosted. Uh, and, you know, how to just lead in in that relationship. Yeah, absolutely. And this is going to be an amazing discussion and it fits right into our core program, which is our up-level sales training. And what we do is we really help you go through the entire sales process, uh, relationship sales, uh, you know, break it down into its parts so that you can walk away um, after the third session. It's a 12-week session, but after the third session, this is live training, uh, virtual right now, of course. Uh, but your sales team is going to start seeing an impact right away. And that's what's so amazing. And then it lasts because of the training, this 12 week training, they really incorporate all these incredible skills uh, to just knock it out of the park. And it, it just makes me so excited to be able to help clients with that because you have an amazing product or service and we need to get that out there and we need to capitalize on every lead too many of them just fall by the wayside. Yeah. And part of the reason is our discussion today, one <laughs> of the seven deadly sins of sales is failing to follow up or follow up effectively. Yeah, it's it's a very, very important subject. And and just, again, before we kind of get started on, you know, kind of diving into that topic, um, you know, just to let you know that, that Lynn's program dovetails very, very nicely with the system that yep. we're creating. Um, one thing, you know, we provide support in terms of best practices um, for sales and some of the processes and systems on the back end. But then there's the, um, you know, the, the conversations that, that you need to have. And if you've got a team, um, there's only so much that we can really do to uh, get inside the head of your sales team or you as, you know, again, as you're representing your company. So I, I just want to, you know, be, again, before we kind of really dive into this, I, I just want to, you know, kind of further endorse, um, you know, we've been through, um, both Elisa and I have been through Lynn's program. Uh, it is, I want to say just kind of soup to nuts. It is absolutely, um, you know, just, it's going, it covers everything that you need in terms of, I mean, we go through all of the you know, preconceived ideas, our own thinking, you know, and, and I'm sure that will get into this conversation a little bit, um, you know, communicating our offers, leading in the relationship, what's working and what's not working, closing, I mean, everything. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very, Lynn, I just, you know, again, just want to compliment you. It's a very comprehensive program. Um, it's not a sales presentation for Lynn's program. But that's just, I'm very, very honest. It's just a very, very honest, I just friend to friend, just just so you know, that was our experience. Lynn did not pay me to say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All and right. I have to admit, it's a great, uh, it is a great fit with your program. And like you, I feel like a lot of customers going into your program is a really big help for them to build that like, know, and trust factor and really compress their sales cycle. It's critical and it's a phenomenal program. So mm. I'm just sending you the love right back. <laughs> there we go, Mutual Admiration Society. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Lynn, I guess, you know, let's start by um, talking about, um, and I'll kind of start off with my experience with this and just kind of uh, hand the ball to you. In terms of follow-up, um, a lot of times, um, you know, I see, uh, you know, maybe um, business owners, founders um, that are doing all their own sales. Yeah. Um, 
and they're frustrated because they're like, wait a minute, I just had this great conversation with this person and now they're not emailing me back. Like they're not reaching out and, you know, telling me nice things. And, and so a lot of times I think it can be really easy for us to take that personally. Uh, and we think oh, there's something I did wrong. There's, or they don't <laughs> like me. Um, there's a lot of um, temptation to think those things, but I think it's really important to uh, understand uh, where our uh, potential client or partner or you know the person that you're communicating with, you know, where they are on the customer journey, and also what's going on in their life. And uh, I think a great way to um, to understand this is I'm certain that you know as again you're watching this video, there's been an opportunity where somebody you could tell they were kind of in the taking the lead in the relationship because you know it was a transaction where you were likely going to give them money they were going to provide services and maybe there were times that you kind of ignored their emails you ignored their outreach um and and it probably wasn't because you didn't like them it probably just happened because you were busy I mean, especially Lynn with a lot, almost every one of our clients reaching out and, uh, you know, building a relationship with a fellow business owner or a busy professional, they have a lot going on in their lives. Uh, oh, so I, I just want to maybe kind of set the stage with, with just knowing, uh, you know, being honest about the dynamic that's going on to begin with. Um, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And ghosting is something that happens in every stage of the sales cycle. So it's not something that happens just at one given time. And it is, it's don't take it personal. This is business. And people have all kinds of noise and distractions, both professionally and personally. And I have a couple of stories about ghosting. So, I mean, first of all, you know, let's, why are people ghosting you? So, I'll, you know, they're busy. We just talked about that. If this isn't a priority, Remember, timing is everything, and this may not be a front burner issue for them or something that is a, a, a new uh, crisis has emerged, so they're managing that, right? They can also feel hunted, that you are over contacting them, that your cadence is just, you're becoming a pest, so we want to watch and avoid that. Um, you may be lacking compelling value. Um, doing the, hey, I'm just calling to follow up and see how everything's going and if we can move this forward. Stop doing that, please. I'm begging you, stop doing that. When you follow up, you must provide value. Yeah. And there is another reason that. That, that they may just not be interested and so they're ignoring you. But for all of the other reasons, you can make a difference. And even if they're not interested, you can find that out they become a relationship that you can still nurture over time because that could change. They could move to another company. They could know somebody who would need your product or service. So that doesn't mean that the relationship ends if they're not interested. It just goes on to a different pace or cadence. So I had that story I was going to share and it was with a huge grocery chain. It's out here on the West Coast. It's called Albertsons. And I had made a connection with one of their directors for a big program. And they were really enthusiastic, but then they just went cold. And every time I followed up, I delivered value with that follow-up. And I went through my cadence and I did a, and I, I, there was this like crickets, nothing. But I went, you know, they were, he was interested. This, uh, you know, so I, I just stayed at it, all right? Because that's one of the keys to avoid that seven deadly sin, this, you know, one of them, which is not following up. Don't give up, you know, you've got to be persistent, but you got to do it in a professional and paced manner. So I went through those steps and one of my steps was I sent him a meeting notice to have lunch and he accepted. Mm -hmm. And I flew in to meet with him. We had a three hour lunch and we moved the program leaps and bounds forward. And he told me right at the beginning, he said, I've been meaning to get back to you. I've been so busy, but I appreciated everything you've provided me because it helped me move forward with my thinking about what you would be providing and how you could help us. And when you sent this invitation, I just went, I got to eat. Let's do this. 
<laughs> so there we were and we had this great meeting and the sales progressed forward. I will say it took time with him because he was just understaffed, right? Too busy. And it took a little bit of time, but eventually that sale went through. Um, so we want to keep that in mind, you know, when we're talking about ghosting. And one of the key things that I've said about follow-up is to provide value and how you follow up. And, and that cannot be understated. And I know, yes. Josh, you're a true believer in this. But when you think about your customer and think in terms of what's their why, you know, why is your product or service of value to them? You know, how is it going to make them their life different? So when we think about that, it's really that, that question of what is this, how is this going to benefit them so they can? And then from that, what are their top questions that they're going to have about your product or service. And you take those questions and you come up, I usually say, you know, work with 10. What are their top 10 questions? And then how are you gonna answer those? And then you can create content, you know, whether it's a video, um, it could just be a script that you do into a bomb bomb video that you send to them for follow-up. Um, it could be a LinkedIn message that you send in and you do a voice message but it's that content of what you're gonna deliver that's gonna be answering that question and adding value. It could be a white paper, it could be a workbook, it could be a you know, brief video explaining um, something that's, like I said, that answers one of those 10 questions. Those all become these foundations for your follow-up that you can pick and choose. Now, you're not gonna make this some kind of automated drip system. Please, please, please mm. don't do that. Yes. You wanna make it personal, but having these templates built and having that designed means that you can then take that, customize it and make it its own. And there are ways that you can make that personal connection. So I'm gonna use another example, Josh, for when we're following up. During one of our conversations, I mentioned something about Disney Plus and you immediately said, oh, wow, the next Mandalorian episode. I can't wait. Yeah. I made it this note that you like the Mandalorian. Okay. So if I was going to follow up with you, let's say you'd been ghosting me. I hadn't heard back. Think of some creative ways that you could do that. And I did. I actually went on, um, spent about five minutes, honestly, five minutes. I found some quotes. Uh, from the Mandalorian that you could literally weave into an email that would call out and you, it would hit a, a chord with you. Like, oh, this is so funny. She just sent me this Mandalorian quote. What's this mm -hmm. about, right? I could send you a package, an actual snail mail package that yeah. would include a Republic of Tea um, warrior herbal tea, which is the Mandalorian and yeah. with a note, right? And you're going to go oh. like, what would you feel if I sent you this pack? Well, I've sent you packages before, but I sent you this package with a personal note and a little tin of the Mandalorian tea. Wow. Wow. And, and it's <laughs> so tempting. And, and I think that, Lynn, the work that, that you do, I know the work that we do, and our whole system is, is kind of in antithesis to that marketing automation where they're just, unfortunately, there are too many marketing systems and marketing gurus out there that have been selling AIs and bots and automation and drip sequences. And, you know, you could just set it, forget it, kick back, put your heels up on the desk and, you know, go spend time on the beach. And, you know, that can work for some things, uh, but certainly not for bigger ticket items where it's all about the relationship. I, you know, I remember talking with one guy and he was selling a 60 thousand dollar branding package uh, and he wasn't currently at the time I was talking with him very successful and I said well tell me about your follow-up he goes oh you know I have a conversation with him and then I put him on a auto email automation sequence I'm like are you kidding me first off stop <laughs> kind of like what you said earlier it's like that listen um folks uh I, let me just ask a question like and again someone who's watching this video right now how do you feel when you are clearly being automated, how special do you feel? How close, how does, uh, you know, how does that automation move your relationship forward with that other person? And at the end of the day, Lynn, I, you know, again, doing what we do, you know, and again, all of our clients, all of our, up my influence, uh, you know, B2B system folks, you know, it's, it's all relationship. First, if you don't have the relationship, it's just not going to move forward. 
Um, yeah. This is not a, I'm thinking of everything that every one of our, our clients do. None of these are going to be very transactional decisions. They're all based on, do I know you'd like you and you, you change the order of it. <laughs> do I know you like you and trust you yeah, so. first? And if, if I feel a connection to you and I like, I genuinely like you, like if there is a need, if there is a way for me to do this, I'm going to do this. Like there are plenty of services that I overpay for because I love who I work with and I wouldn't consider working with anybody else. Um, and so yeah, successful well, business owners, decision yeah. makers, that's what they do as well. Sorry, I was jumped in there, but yeah, it's the value you deliver. And that's a really big piece. And the relationship is so important, that building block, because not only is it going to help you close that initial sale, it's going to um, help you turn that client into a champion and that you can nurture, you know, that you can have future business with them and they will become a referral source for you. And warm referrals are the absolute pinnacle of gold of gold, right? And so when you put these different techniques into follow-up, it really is establishing how you're going to treat them as a client so that they know that, they're gonna be, that you're going to be responsive, that you're going to put their why first. It's about them. It's not about you. It's about them, all right? You're building credibility. You're building the sense that you're reliable, that you can be counted on. Um, it, everything that you're doing is going to help strengthen that relationship and push it forward and shorten the sales cycle because you're not treating them as just another number, you know, check it off the list. Instead, you have created templates that you can utilize to shorten your time, but it's still personalized because that's what's so important. Um, you know, one thing that you had talked about, and, and I wonder if other people, when you talked about this, were questioning, you know, kind of like, oh, man, how do I know? It, and you brought up um, over contacting. Is, is there a way to measure that or something you might want to listen for uh, that says, ooh, yeah, something's wrong with our cadence because people are saying this or people doing this. Like, I, I think sometimes it's, it's hard for us to truly experience what it's like to be on the other side of the table, unless someone gives us that feedback. And that's nice when we can get that feedback. Most people won't. <laughs> they won't tell you why they don't like you. They just don't, they, uh, they just don't, they just don't tell you. Yeah. So, and it's going to be different depending on the product or service you sell. Um, you know, having closed multi-million dollar global deals. Um, I normally will not follow up with someone um, without at least letting a week go by. Mm. So that one week period. But it's also important to think about the type of follow-up and what I'm delivering in exchange of following up. Because once again, it's not just an empty, hey, I'm following up on this. You want to be providing value. And that, that's so important. So having thought out where are they at in the process, when you look at your sales process, you know, you're going from that whole range of awareness, you know, and where you're developing your worthy intent that you're demonstrating to them that you, that you're really interested in them and helping them. Uh, and so then you go through that. That's one stage where you have follow-up. Another is consideration, you know, or cultivation where you're cultivating and building that relationship. That type of follow-up is once again different. That was really where I was at with the example I gave with Albertsons, right? Um, then you have that decision stage where you really have built a rapport with the client. And I've had cases where I basically knew the client was going to move forward, but trying to get them to, okay, let's sign the, <laughs> let's, let's get the commitment that you're actually moving forward and get the contract going, right? Uh, it's like taking a lot of follow-up to get to that. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, what are next steps? Let's get this in play and let's do a kickoff meeting, yada, yada. So, and then of course that final stage of your relationship and your sales funnel is really where you're turning them into a champion and you're nurturing that relationship. And even there, you're gonna have follow-up. Um, one of the best and most effective ways that you can do that with an existing client is through a quarterly business review, whether you have it quarterly or you know, biannually, annually, but where you really go over mm -hmm. what you've provided for them, what the results are that they've seen, and then the rest of it is all about what's next, you know, and what, what's going on in their world, 
uh, so that you're keeping your, your finger on the pulse so that you can recognize things. And when you do that, you're really helping make sure that you maintain that relationship and that you can expand it. Because the easiest way to build business is by expanding within a current existing client and yeah. growing from there. That's absolutely the easiest. And number one thing is not to allow the churn, keeping mm. your finger on their pulse so that you know what's going on within their world. Oh, see, this is so crazy. Um, so that you can <laughs> keep building that. <laughs> yeah, this is live for people. My ear out. <laughs> so that's really important. So within those stages, you're going to every stage, they're going to have different questions and you're going to create these different things that you can provide as value. And then of course, most products and services, you have different types of clients. You may have different market segments. So a follow-up um, piece of content may work in one segment, but not in another. So mm -hmm. these are all things that you've got to map out by doing that work ahead and planning it. Then you're going to have these pieces that you can pull forward when you're following up to deliver value. And when you do that cadence once a week, like everyone's going to be different on where you and yeah. how you stage that, but um, they're not going to feel pestered because you've actually delivered a value to them. You're not hounding them. You're actually giving them something that maybe they'll ignore. Uh, and I'll have to admit like, Josh, you got, you provide so much value. Like when we were first starting to work together and I wouldn't always watch the videos or the mature, the, uh, the content that you provided right away, mm -hmm. but I flagged it and I, I would go back to it usually within a week and I would check it out because I knew it was going to be valuable and that yeah. it would make a difference. And I was able to then act on it. So that's the thing. So they're busy, you know, yeah. they've got stuff going on, but they know it's valuable. And they're going to go back and look at it. And when they do, that just strengthens the relationship on their end that, wow, okay, they gave me something that was worthwhile. So, yeah. and that aspect of following up is what really makes a difference of being able to move that sale forward. And it does truly compress your sales cycle when you do yeah. that. For sure. Show that you care. Um, and Lynn, I feel like we're just like scratching the surface here. <laughs> um, now, I, I do want to let people know. Um, so in terms of the, can, can just at a high level, maybe either explain, you know, if people are like, okay, I really believe Lynn has some value potentially for us, given what our needs are. Like, how, what, what would engagement look like with you? Like, can, do, do you have like an introductory call? I mean, how does that work? Oh, absolutely. Uh, so you can, um, on our website, you have a way that you can book a, cal a call with me through Calendly. So it's super simple. Uh, you'll get reminders and we can talk about our program and the services that we offer. When you are working with our program, you know, we do recommend that once a week schedule because it doesn't impact your team negatively for their ongoing work. And yet you're consistently building um, on the skills and you're going to see results right away. And they also, the retention goes way up. And the most important thing is it's a long-term, long-term benefits that you see this sales generation that comes out of it. It's not just a one hit wonder and then it's over. <laughs> Instead, mm -hmm. it's got that lasting power that we want to have in our sales teams uh, for their professional growth. So that's really uh, important. And, and you actually get to see me and yeah. <laughs> we will stop in the session, as you know, and address something that's going on right then and there. And we can provide uh, advice and counseling live on the time, on the spot. Yeah. Lynn Wetbeck, again, futureforwardsales.com. And there's a link down below here on this page. Uh, that that you can uh, you can click and connect with Lynn. Lynn's good people. I can <laughs> <laughs> I can vouch for Lynn. So uh, so Lynn, thank you so much for sharing those great tips. And um, I, I, I with, you, with your permission, I think we may add maybe a couple of other videos uh, and create a little bit of a series in this uh, as well. If you oh know. yeah, we should. We uh, it would be a lot of fun. I mean, it's all right. Just amazing. Thank you so, so much, Josh. Whatever else, maybe we'll just put the offer here to, to, to the person who watches any other subject that, that you want Lynn to give a little mini lesson uh, on, you know, kind of the, you know, best practices, um, you know, just keep, get in touch with, uh, you know, your account manager, me or whoever, and say, you know what, I want Lynn to talk about, you know, whatever that is. And, yeah. and we'll see if we can get Lynn again. So Lynn, yeah. thank you so much.
You're welcome. Thank you, Josh. Bye.